高校の頃は特にクラブ活動もせず同じような非活動的な男たちとくすぶっているばかりだったしかし私はピカピカの大学1回生幻の司法と言われるバラ色のキャンパスライフへの扉が今ここに無数に開かれているのを目の当たりにし興奮半ば朦朧としていたそして私が選び取ったのは黒髪の乙女たちと爽やかに汗を流しながら恋のラリーを打ち合うのだそう考えていた私は手の施しようのないアホだった Hey everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of Taki Sobo with our review for Tatami Galaxy. I'm Nate, and as always, I'm joined here by the anime aficionado, Malesh. Hey. The anime we'll be reviewing today is one that I've had a tough time describing. In terms of genre, it's got comedy, romance, a little bit of genre, and it takes place in a sort of modern Japanese university setting. How would you expand upon that, Malesh? Yeah, I agree with you. It's hard to put this show exactly in its one genre since it explores so many. But I would primarily say it focuses more on the psychological aspect of going to college and the experience you have there. And the trials and tribulations you're going to face while being an adult and transitioning towards a new life. Something that you practically never see in the anime community at all, really, because you mainly see a lot of high school shows. So, seeing a college show is definitely something that's very interesting, something that I personally really enjoyed watching. Time to Me Galaxy entered the spring season of 2010 with an 11 episode run. A short tenure works as the storytelling flows very well, it doesn't drag anything out. Interestingly enough, this anime is actually based on a written novel rather than, let's say, a manga or a light novel or even a visual novel. The anime also won the grand prize for animation at the Japan Media Arts in 2010. Now I'll let Nate tell you the basis of the plot. The story of Tatami Galaxy is pretty unique. At first, it sounds normal. Young adult enters college, joins some clubs, meets a mischievous peer who becomes an unlikely friend, and finds a cute girl who's independent but shy, things like that. But there's a really huge plot device that sets this anime apart. At the beginning of each episode, the protagonist starts off entering college and deciding what path he will take. It almost always ends up badly.、Uh, he'll, he'll join one club, spend a lot of time in it, and you think he's wasted his time getting into mischievous settings and shenanigans and stuff like that. And the episode sort of revolves around his mistakes and short sightedness. However, at the end of every episode, he's given a second chance, and the episode will actually literally rewind like a tape back to the beginning. And the next episode will start off with him entering college again, choosing a different path. The secondary characters always show up no matter what path he takes, so that's a very interesting plot device as well. If he joins the tennis club and finds these characters, or joins the movie club next time, the same characters will be in that club as well. But it's with different roles. Yes, and now I'll let Malesh talk about the characters. As the remaining characters in the show, there's a protagonist who's just entering college for the first time as the episode starts, like Nate said before. And each time he's very excited and enthusiastic about entering college because he wants to change the way he was from his high school self when he was really shy and poor socializing. So at the end of each episode, he believes he's wasted his time in the club for at least two years, which kind of reflects how some college people are like in general, where a lot of people are very ecstatic, excited about entering college for the first time. But as time moves on, they kind of realize that, hey, maybe I wasted my life. This will lead to some of the other characters you see in the show, like Ozu, who is his best friend, but not exactly like your average best friend because he's kind of an evil guy that does a lot of mischievous things. That does actually kind of represent in college the friend that you had that might be like, yo, dude, let's go light fireworks at a river and try to make them attack people. So he kind of represents the more negativity side while trying to balance out kind of the main characters more. Kind of pure way of thinking. Aside from the protagonist and the demonic Ozu, we'll also find Akashi, who's an underclassman and a mostly introverted young woman, kind of like the protagonist. She's more focused on, you know, the academic side of college. She's got a feisty attitude that I enjoy in particular, and she likes to do things without any people getting in her way. She occasionally serves as a love interest for the protagonist. We'll also see Higuchi, an eighth year student who's really mellow, unusual character, got a giant chin. In stark、yeah. contrast, we have another a t h e i s t student, Josaki, who's arrogant, perverted, and is kind of a jock type character, and he often causes conflict. Aside from those key characters, we'll find other characters who continue to make reappearances in the show no matter what path the protagonist chooses at the beginning of each episode. Now I'll talk about the animation and art. The animation is done by the famous Madhouse Studios, who we've mentioned before with our One Punch Man review. Don't like their other works, t o t e m i Galaxy has probably the most unique art style we've seen from them, compared to their shows like Parasite or Hunter x Hunter. The art style mixes elements with a real life shot mixed in with a very basic, minimalistic art style that vaguely reminded me of a ping pong animation. I would also agree that the art style is very well done and fits the show's atmosphere. It is primarily minimalistic,、uh, but unlike ping pong, I would say this art style has way less emphasis on realism. It still looks like an anime, but it's got a very beautiful aesthetic and focuses mostly on curved lines and abstract backgrounds. 
Visually, I'll say this anime is a masterpiece, and now we'll talk about the auditory experience. The opening theme was pretty good and upbeat, but I especially love the ending theme. It was much more chill and had a really great visual sequence to go along with it. The ending theme was much more melancholy than the opening theme, but it has an energizing beat at the same time. I think it's the perfect background music for you to sit down and, you know, just continue to ponder the events of the episode you just watched. I never skipped it, I let it play all the way through to help me take the episode in. Voice acting wise, the show is only subtitled and has so much dialogue and uses a lot of Japanese puns that would actually be pretty hard to give it a proper dub that would really do it justice. Thankfully, the Japanese voice actors did a great job this time with their roles, especially the main character and Ozu, who really knocked it out of the park. I also enjoyed the ambience of the soundtrack since it felt very well with the sort of kind of like pondering theme of the show, and I really enjoyed it. The opening ending themes as well. I enjoyed, but not as much as this kid. As an aside, for those of you who aren't used to subtitles, so for those of you who read slower, the first episode subtitles are ludicrous speed, mm. really fast. It might bother you, it definitely bothered me, but after the first episode, the subtitles slow down dramatically, so if you can just tolerate it, I think it's well worth your time. It, sometimes in the later episodes they go a bit fast, you know, miss maybe a word or two, but you've always got contact clues, so after the first episode, it's fine. To wrap things up, I really enjoyed watching through Tao to Me Galaxy. As being conscious myself, it was fun comparing my ideologies with the main characters. And having watched it both in high school and college, you can definitely say that it's pretty much better if you watch it while you're in college. I enjoyed it way more and appreciate the risk that it took presenting a story that really did make a lasting impact on my life and the way I think about it because it was set in college, I was in college, and it just made me think about it a bit more. I'd say this anime is great for all, but definitely a must-watch for college students, especially for a university as opposed to just community college, because there's a lot more experiences that you have when you go to college full-time. You can watch Talk to Me Galaxy for free on Hulu in the US, or on Funimation's website, or Funimation's YouTube channel. You can also support Funimation directly by buying the Blu-ray for this show on the Funimation website. As always, if you've watched Talk to Me Galaxy already, you can click the first link in the description for our after show we discuss some more in-depth things, possibly some spoilers, things like that. And uh, thanks for watching our review of Talking to Galaxy. As always, if you liked it, leave a like and a comment for feedback, and we'll see you guys next time with the review for Daily Lives of High School Boys.